Hello and welcome to your weekly five minutes of intercourse with Dr. Don. Because we all need to talk at least a little about sex. <laughs> Weeks ago, we took the first step towards granting you the wish to make anyone fall in love with you. We did this by having you recall what it's like to fall in love and by me describing the sympathetic nervous system to prove love is within you. Last week, we got another step closer to granting your wish by having you think about a loved one and by me describing classical conditioning to prove love surrounds you. This week, your wish of having the ability to make anyone fall in love with you will be granted. We'll do this by having you go on a blind date and by me describing the excitation transfer theory, an empirically based theory that combines what we learned over the past two weeks. But as you are literally moments away from finally gaining your wish, that you have so patiently been waiting for over these past two weeks, as a person of good conscience, I must take pause and warn you about something. If you continue, this is going to get weird, really weird. Not only are you going to have the ability to make anyone fall in love with you, you're about to have the ability to control people. And honestly, being able to control other people makes one's own life quite complicated. So I completely understand if you don't think you can handle this. You still have time to stop. You can click here and go have a Superman day in a safe, happy romper room place on YouTube. You're still here? No romper room for you? So you think you can handle this much power and control? Then let's own excitation transfer theory. Dr. Dolph Zillman began developing the excitation transfer theory in the early 1970s when he recognized the sympathetic nervous system often fools the central nervous system. Remember our sympathetic nervous system is our 4F nervous system. It automatically and physiologically reacts to environmental stimuli that cause us to fight, flight, feed, or act sexually. While our central nervous system is our thinking and interpreting nervous system. It's composed of the brain and spinal cord. Zillman found sympathetic nervous system arousal can transfer to neutral stimuli within the environment. This transfer occurs via classical conditioning and in specific circumstances is interpreted by the central nervous system as being sexual. Zillman and his colleagues found initial evidence for this transfer of sexual arousal with experimental participants who were required to be cycling for 10 minutes before viewing an erotic film. These participants with excited sympathetic nervous systems from cycling found the erotic films to be more sexually arousing than participants who were not cycling before viewing the films. Now let me be clear, cycling per se does not lead to sexual arousal. Instead, the key to this transfer of sexual arousal is amping up the sympathetic nervous system by any means before a potentially sexually arousing situation. Richard Dienstbeer amped up the sympathetic nervous systems of his experimental participants by startling them. He did this by jerking back the seated participants' chairs 35 degrees from vertical and dropping a four pound weight on the ground. Following the startle, Dienstbeer had an opposite sex experimenter enter the room in which the participants were seated. Dienstbeer found participants with excited sympathetic nervous systems from the startle 
had greater sexual attraction towards the opposite sex experimenter than participants who had not been startled before meeting the experimenter. Gregory White and his colleagues amped up the sympathetic nervous systems of experimental participants by either negative or positive environmental situations. For some of his participants, he had them listen to a graphic audio recording of a mob killing. Some of his other participants listened to a humorous audio recording of a comedian give his stand-up routine. And a last group of participants listened to a monotone narrator describe a frog's circulatory system. Following these recordings, all participants viewed a film of an opposite-sex person give a brief biography of themselves. Participants with excited, sympathetic nervous systems from the graphic and humorous audio recordings rated the people introducing themselves as significantly more sexually attractive than participants who had listened to the recording about the frog's circulatory system. Donald Dutton and Arthur Aaron showed this transfer of sexual arousal goes beyond the laboratory setting. They had experimental participants either walk across a narrow suspension bridge that was more than 200 feet above roaring rapids. The bridge tended to wobble and sway and twist. Or they had experimental participants walk across a wide, low-to-the-ground bridge that was stable and immobile. After participants walked across the respective bridges, an experimenter gave them a brief survey and a phone number to call if they had any questions. Participants with excited sympathetic nervous systems from walking across the high, narrow, swaying bridge were almost four times as likely to call the opposite sex experimenter than participants who had walked across the bridge that was wide, low, solid, and immobile. And as Dutton and Aaron had predicted, these questions were less about the experiment itself and more personal about the experimenter. My favorite demonstration of excitation transfer was done by Cindy Meston and her colleagues at the University of Texas at Austin. Meston interviewed people before and after riding roller coasters at amusement parks. Meston found people who were riding with a romantic partner rated their partners as being more sexually attractive after riding the roller coaster than before riding it. Theoretically because of their excited sympathetic nervous systems from riding the roller coaster. And Meston found people who were riding alone rated a photograph of an opposite sex individual as being more sexually attractive and as having higher levels of dating desirability after riding the roller coaster than before riding it. These studies of excitation transfer reveal three keys about the person you want to fall in love with you. The first key is to get this person's sympathetic nervous system aroused or excited which should be pretty easy to do because you can do this by any means, whether these means are positive, negative, or anything in between. The second key is you have to be within close physical proximity of this person when they're being sympathetically aroused. In other words, you have to be hanging with this person when they're excited. And the third and last key is you have to continue being around this person until they become unaware of the original causes of the sympathetic arousal. In other words, you have to hang out with this person for five to 30 minutes after the excitement. Enough experiments and data. Let's apply this and make anyone fall in love with you. You're going on a blind date. You go to pick up your date at their home, and when they open the front door, they look you over top and down and smirk. You suck!
and you quickly surmise this is not a smirk of attraction, but instead a smirk of meh. Now, if this was to happen to you in any other situation, you'd be psychologically devastated. Your self-esteem would be crushed and you'd likely go into a deep, dark depression that begins with eating gallons of ice cream. But this isn't any other situation because you subscribe to 5MI Weekly and you're about to use the three keys of excitation transfer to make this person fall in love with you. These keys determine what you're going to be doing on this date. And what you're going to be doing on this date needs to be exciting your victim of love's sympathetic nervous system. For instance, you may begin your date with a drive in your convertible, or better yet, on your motorcycle, to an amusement park, where you together ride a Ferris wheel, several roller coasters, and lots of bumper cars. Next, you drive to a movie theater and watch a horror film. Then you drive, and how should you be driving? Can you say fast? To the nearest big city for a late night bite to eat at a restaurant atop the tallest building in the city. You end this date by taking a nice, quiet, leisurely stroll through a peaceful park. I promise, by this time, your victim of love will be doing anything but smirking at you. Using what we learned about classical conditioning last week and the physiology of love the week before, we can model exactly what is happening to your victim of love. You are the conditional stimulus within this classical conditioning model. How does it feel to be a conditional stimulus? When you first met your victim of love, they didn't automatically react to you in a positive or negative fashion. Instead, they merely smirked at you. You were inert to them. Following this smirk, you selected what you would be doing and where you would be going on your date, based solely on exciting your victim of love's sympathetic nervous system. Driving in a convertible, riding on a motorcycle, going on a Ferris wheel, riding roller coasters, riding bumper cars, being frightened by a movie, and eating at high altitude are all unconditional stimuli within classical conditioning. In all the time your victim of love is doing these things, you are right by their side. Following this excitement, you systematically selected how to end the date in a nice, quiet place where you are the most prominent and obvious part of your victim of love's environment. During this time, the transfer of arousal becomes complete and concrete. You, instead of the unconditional stimuli from your exciting date, will be causing the sympathetic branch of your victim of love's autonomic nervous system to become aroused. Now, using their central nervous system, specifically their brain, your victim of love has to figure out and interpret why you are arousing them. And the most likely interpretation of a person who is causing one to be aroused and excited, I think I'm falling in love with you. My time is nearly up this week, about eight minutes ago. But let me quickly share three relationship oddities that excitation transfer theory fully explains. Relationship oddity number one, makeup sex. People tend to experience sex following an argument with a partner as better sex than sex with that same partner when they're not arguing. Why is that? During sex, the partner's sympathetic nervous systems are still aroused from arguing. This arousal is interpreted by the central nervous system as sexual arousal in addition to the arousal caused by having sex itself. Relationship oddity number two, rebound relationships. I'm sure this has never happened to you before, but maybe to one of your friends. Your friend ends a long-term real relationship and almost immediately goes right into another relationship with someone they barely know, 
yet they say they're in love. Why is that? Your friend's sympathetic nervous system is obviously aroused from the stress of ending a long-term relationship. But this arousal is interpreted by the central nervous system as sexual arousal about this someone new. In relationship oddity number three, bad boy relationships. Why are some heterosexual women more likely to be sexually attracted to bad boys than good boys? Ready for something obvious? Bad boys do bad things, often objectively negative things that cause heterosexual women's sympathetic nervous systems to be aroused from the stress of being exposed to these negative environmental experiences. However, this arousal is interpreted as sexual arousal by the women's central nervous systems. Before you judge these relationship oddities as things that would never happen to you, take a look at your own sexual relationships past or present, and reflect upon what was happening in your life in general as these relationships were forming. Upon reflection, a lot of people find their lives were stressful when these relationships were forming. Maybe they were starting school or ending school or moving or even losing a loved one. Isn't it weird to think the basis of people's entire long-term loving relationships is their central nervous systems being fooled by their sympathetic nervous systems. Let me end this three-part series about making anyone fall in love with you with a promise and a question. I promise in the coming weeks, we'll be exploring love well beyond the confines of it just being the central nervous system being fooled by the sympathetic nervous system. We'll explore love as an unconscious motive as a biblical commandment, and as the only thing that overcomes loneliness. But before we do that, let me ask you a question. Now that you have this ability to make anyone fall in love with you, will you be using this power for good or for evil? Thanks for watching. If you could rate this video, I'd appreciate it. Like us on Facebook at 5MI Weekly and follow us on Twitter. If you have suggestions about intercourse topics, then leave your ideas in the comment section or send those suggestions on Twitter to at 5MI underscore weekly using the hashtag 5MI Topics. If I use your ideas for an intercourse, then I promise I'll be sending you a free copy of Being, my book on happiness.